what the craft buddies want the craft buddies get today we are doing more wood diys because so many of you asked for them we're headed to the hardware store and in this installment we are grabbing two by fours we're going to do everything from home decor to some scrap wood projects all the way up to a full outdoor patio set. All you need to make it is a saw and a drill. And you guys, the best part is the lumber was under $100. So let's go. So when it comes to two by fours, there are a few different options of what you can decide to use. I decided to go with a two by four by eight construction framing lumber. Now you can do cedar two by fours. You can also do pressure treated ones for your outside furniture, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any green flex from the pressure treating chemicals that they put on the wood for outside. So while ideally that would have been helpful, I didn't want my light stain to show that through. So I will show you how I got around that and sealed it in a different way. If you can go somewhere with an outdoor lumber yard, it is so much easier. At my local Menards, I just walk to the back. I tell them how many two by fours I wanted. I did one run of 11, one run of 17, and it all the 17 fits here in Alex's Jeep. And then I have a 2015 Chevy Equinox. Just FYI, you can fit them in SUVs and you can take multiple trips if you're able. I also had a lot of you ask, how does going to the outdoor lumber yard and essentially prepaying for your wood dictate the way that you pick out your wood? And it really doesn't because you're going to go right to the pile like I'm showing here and you're going to go through. You want to be willing to dig and make sure you're looking straight down the wood so it doesn't bow either way. This one's bowing to the left. This one, on the other hand, was nice and straight. You also want to make sure there aren't any huge gashes or chunks out of your wood. Now, before we get building, also a friendly reminder to make sure you're putting safety first and always take overabundant safety precautions. Now let's get into the first one. I'm super excited about this one because I always get questions about our floating shelves. We built one for our dining room as well as one for our entryway in our new house. And these are really simple to build, but they actually add a ton of character to the space. Now the inspiration for this was this buffet that we got from Alex's grandpa and I wanted to have a shelf over the top of it. We measured the wall and decided we wanted the shelf to be 60 inches across. And the star of the show is the hanging system, which is called a cleat, which is made out of two by fours. So I decided I wanted a 60 inch wide shelf. So for that, I needed one two by four by eight, two one by eight by eights, and one one by six by eight. And what that means is that they are one inch by the number and then the by eight at the end means they're eight feet long. So here is how I did my math for that one. So I started by figuring out, okay, I needed a 60 inch wide one by six piece and the, both the front and the sides are one by sixes. The side, I measured the width of a one by eight, which is the piece on the top and the bottom. And I just did a one by eight instead of doing a square setup just because I wanted more room for decor on my shelf. So it is a one by eight deep, but the front piece is a one by six. Once you have the size for your box, you wanna make the cleat. So I needed about a 54 inch piece in the back to give myself three inch gaps on either side to slide the box on. And then I measured these cleats. So if you see my math by the green arrow, I took one and a half inch by five and a half inch. So one and a half is for the two by four in the back plus the actual cleat piece that gives me six and three quarter inches, which is gonna give me about an inch buffer between the front of the cleat and my box, which is a snug fit, but not too tight. Step one is to assemble the cleat. So I'm starting by drilling some pilot holes so I don't split the wood. And then I'm going to take two of those five and a quarter inch pieces and flush them with either end to create essentially what looks like a C piece. So before we add the extra three pieces in the center for support on this wall bracket, we are gonna go in and see where the studs are. So then that way we don't put a support right in front of a stud cause then you can't screw into the stud and it won't be as sturdy when you put it on the wall. Once the studs were marked on the cleat, then we made sure to avoid that area and add the two additional five and a quarter pieces of two by four to the cleat. Then I went through on everything, the one by eight, as well as the pieces of one by sixes and gave it a really good sand. And then it was time to assemble. Now we're gonna make our box. So we're gonna grab our two pieces of one by eight, as well as two of the smaller one by six pieces. And we're going to use wood glue and one and a half inch brad nails to attach those pieces in a C shape. Once that's done, we're gonna add the other one by eight piece. So we've got the one by eights as the top and bottom of our box. Get that all secure in the same way with the wood glue and the nails. And then we're gonna use wood glue and nails again to add the one by six to the front of the box. The way that this is cut, it's going to completely cover it so you have a seamless piece of wood on the front. 
Then if you have any areas that overlap that aren't perfect because pine is not a perfect wood, especially cheap pine, you can go through and really sand that down, buff it in and make all those edges look a lot better. Then we wanted to get the cleat on the wall to make sure that everything looked and appeared just like we had in our mind. So we're marking the studs, making sure it's centered, using a level and then Alex is doing two screws per stud. We ended up having three across this wall for how big the shelf was. We're using an impact driver to drive it straight into the wall for extra support. Once we did the pressure test, we put the box up just to make sure it fit. And then it was time for some final finishes. So I wiped off any sawdust that was gonna get in the way of my staining, stained it with some early American stain by Minwax. And then I wanted to seal it, even though it was inside and I'm kind of iffy on the indoor sealant, I did wanna make sure that if I was putting stuff up on it, I wasn't gonna scratch it or nick it too bad. And here is the finished project. So originally I made two of these for the dining room, but I thought it was gonna be too busy. So I have this set up now with just some photos and some artwork. I did this set up in a thrift flip video. So if you're interested in this kind of organic modern setup, I will link that video. But once I got the one up, we decided to take the other one and put it right in our front room, right as you walk in to our front door. And this is really nice. It's great for seasonal things. And I also love that that front piece is hooked the way it is. So the seams are on the side. So when you look straight at it, it just looks like one board just floating. Also, if you have been in the market for tools, I wanted to share that Ryobi, Ryobi, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato, is doing their Ryobi days at Home Depot. So basically they've got two different tiers and at the $99 price point, you can get two batteries and a charger. And when you buy that for 99 bucks, you get a free tool. So here are all of the tools included in the $99 price point. I was really excited to see that the jigsaw was in there. So if you want to do something like that, you can get additional batteries, circular saw, multi-tools, a lot of different options. And then they also have a $199 option where it's a different starter kit, but then you also can get the free tool. This is totally not sponsored. I just buy a lot of Ryobi tools and I wanted to let you guys know in case you've been eyeing something and want to get it on a discount. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Whitney, this is Whiskey and Wit, and on this channel, I love to share all things DIY and budget home decor. So if you love that too and are enjoying this video on wood builds, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you can join the Whiskey Craft Buddies and DIY along with us. Up next, we are gonna make this modern organic bench, which I absolutely love. I have seen some of these online going for hundreds of dollars, and I just wanted one that fit my space, was the right size, and could be colors customized to my home. So again, I went back to that two by four pile and grabbed one two by four, and I also needed a two by eight by four, which I got for under five bucks at Menards. So the first thing I did was cut up my two by four. I needed two legs and two braces, and then I also cut 36 inches off of my two by eight. So again, two by eight at 36 inches. I did two two by fours at six inches long, and I added 10 degree perpendicular ends and then four two by fours at 24 inches with 10 degree miters. The 10 degree miters are optional, but I do like them on the edge because it's going to help your bench sit flat on the floor. So I just tilted my saw in the back. There's a little lever if your saw does that. And I just cut 10 degrees on an angle. And for your legs, you want those to be parallel cuts. Then I went through, sanded everything, and I also rocked around the corners of the two by eight so that there wasn't anything poking out, especially for Finn on the edge of the bench. Then it was the fun part to distress everything. I used my hammer, both the back and the front, to create little nicks and dings in the wood. Pine is a really soft wood, so it's easy to distress like this, and it's gonna make the wood look more reclaimed like our inspirations. Then I used my Craig jig to create pocket holes on the top pieces that were going into the bench seat, and I will go into more detail on how to use a Craig jig on a later project in this video. I'll walk you through it step by step. I ended up doing one and a half inch pocket holes and two and a quarter inch pocket hole screws, drilled it right in to the bottom of the two by eight, and I did two on one side and two on the other, making sure to measure as I go so everything was kind of evenly spaced out. They sit so nicely on the bottom of the bench with that 10 inch miter. And again, you could screw if you don't have a Craig jig straight through the seat and then just cover it with wood filler before you finish the bench. So there are options if you don't have that Craig jig, it was just easier for me. 
Then I tried to do pocket holes for the little braces, but there wasn't enough room. So I ended up just going through with a three inch self tapping screw to hook it in from either side. So the brace made the legs stronger. Then I decided to do a little bit of experimenting with some stains that I've had in my stash for a while, aged barrel, English chestnut, and then also a white stain that Alex bought for a project that we didn't end up using. I started by putting down a little bit of the aged barrel, which is more of a gray stain. I went over the top with this early American and kind of went back and forth until I got a color that I liked with the gray and the brown. And then I went over the top with the white stain and this is where the magic happened. It really made it look distressed, reclaimed, especially with all of those nicks in the wood. I completed that all the way around my bench and you can do as much or as little as you want, but I was going for splotchy, I was going for reclaimed, I was going for rustic, kind of that organic modern. After it was dried overnight, I went through with that Verithane triple thick again. I really like it because you can do one coat and you've got really good coverage, especially when you're looking at a bench where people could be sitting on it because this is strong enough to hold me up and I'm not a small individual. So this is something that people could sit on. It could be at the end of a bed. And in lumber, it was under 10 bucks, but all in it was under 25 with all the additional things like screws and stain and stuff. It could definitely be like a side table decorated like I'm doing here, or you could add it to the end of the bed, or like I'm doing here in our living room just with a blanket. So what about all that scrap wood? Once you start doing projects like this, you will accumulate a variety of different sizes of wood. So let me show you what I like to do with them. I like to take these smaller pieces and stain them so that I can put them in little vignettes like this. I just use them to raise up these signs. You can't really see them because it blends in with the wood of the box and it makes it really easy to get depth and different heights in your decor. You can also take ones that look more like a square shape, sand them down and stain them as well. And then I just went through with a little bit of white chalk paint, dry brushed it on the edges around each side. And then I cut down these four by six images from our recent trip to Hawaii, stuck them on with double stick tape. And you have a really cute rustic looking like Polaroid picture frame. And it's nice to just add to a vignette. I love the warmth of the wood and it's quick and easy to put together. And it's a small scrap, but I'm one of those people that save all my scraps. Let me know if you're like that down in the comments. My pile is getting insane, so I wanted to make sure to do something with these scraps so I didn't add to the pile. Now, what about some of those longer scraps? Well, they make really good signs, but I decided to do something for the summer. I painted one white, one blue, which I mixed a little bit of blue and gray together to get the navy blue I was looking for, and then a red one. I had a long, a medium, and a short one. And then I took some of this Dollar Tree nautical rope, wrapped a section in tape to cut it so it wouldn't unravel on me. And then I unraveled one end just to make it look like the end of a firecracker. I hot glued it on the top and then cut some pieces that were a little bit longer for my white and red one. And then to finish it off and really add some Americana, I used some of these galvanized star ornaments from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of two. I just use my tin snips to take off the beads in the top. And then I hot glued them respectively to the different firecrackers. I like these because it is a statement piece, but it doesn't take up a ton of space. It's great to put out for barbecues this summer, especially 4th of July, or if you do like I do and keep your Americana stuff out all summer, it's a great just staple piece to have out and it was all scrap wood. And then a final scrap wood idea for you is to make fun little houses. All you have to do is take a rectangle piece, mark the center of it, and then set your saw to a 45 degree angle. Now here you want to make sure that your rectangle is big enough so you can safely keep your fingers back away from the blade, but we're going to line it up and cut off one corner to meet that center point. And then we're going to cut it again to have the other side meet the center point after we flipped it over. Then you've got a cute little house. You can sand it, you can stain it, you can paint it. I love these four little gingerbread houses. I made some for Christmas with some puff paint as icing and they turned out so cute. But for summer, I just cut out some different decals on my little Cricut Joy machine. I made a Wi-Fi one by layering some vinyl and then I just added our Wi-Fi details to the back so that people can go over and grab the sign if they want to connect to our Wi-Fi while at the pool. And then I also found this cute little tongue in cheek saying about the lifeguard being on a beer break. So I applied that, sealed them with some Mod Podge, and these are perfect for the outdoor set that I will be showing you in just a second. I think these are so fun. You could put whatever you want on it. You could also use the little houses with the double stick tape to add photos. 
like I shared before, so many different options, but it's nice to be able to create those little house shapes because then the sky's the limit. So one of the big selling points for me for this new house was that we would have a deck space. We did not have that at the old house, but as I started to look at some of the outdoor furniture that I liked, I was getting sticker shock so bad. So I decided to try my hand and build my own, and we're gonna start with this chair, which is a high-end dupe of things you see at World Market and even West Elm. Now, I'm not huge on trying to create things with like engineering structure that you're gonna sit on by myself, so I grabbed a plan from AnnaWhite.com she is literally my favorite place to get plans. They're so simple and easy. You don't need crazy tools. And here is a full rundown of all of the different cuts that you need. The only thing not shown is a back brace, which is a two by two that I cut to 24 inches, which we'll show in a minute. We're gonna start by sanding everything down after we get it all cut. And then step one is going to be a 20 and a half inch piece. And we're gonna attach it to a 35 and one eighth inch piece to make an armrest using three inch screws. I like these SPAC screws because they tap themselves and they're also outdoor friendly. So we're going to lay everything down here and then we're going to get to work assembling it. I started by doing the top and the two legs together with those self tapping screws. Just send it right through. I laid it down and then we're gonna use two more screws per side to attach the leg. The lower part is five and a half inches up from the bottom leg. You're gonna repeat the exact same thing in mirror so that you have two legs like this. And then I decided at this point to sand, stain, and seal everything because it helped me get into the crevices. So after I put these together, an easy way to kind of help things line up if it's not perfect, especially like cheap standard lumber, is you can take your sander and run it up against kind of like you're filing your nails and that will help get everything flush. The other thing I am doing on these top corners because I have a toddler is kind of curving my wrist like this. So then that's gonna create more of a rounded corner. You can't really tell a whole lot by looking at it, but bumping into this rounded corner, if Finn is running around, is a lot safer than bumping into a sharp, like squared edge. So that's personal preference, but if you've got kiddos running around like me, or you just don't wanna poke yourself, <laughs> that's a tip. Now I wanted something that looked kind of beachy for the finish, so I ended up going with the stain called Driftwood, and it was perfect. It was the color I was looking for, and this allowed me to get into a lot of the nooks and crannies instead of building the full chair and then trying to do that. I also went through after the stain dried with two coats of this Spar Urethane from Verithane, which is actually made for outdoor furniture. This is how I got around not getting pressure treated wood in the first place because I added a sealant on top that is going to do something similar. Then once that dried overnight, it was time to attach the seat slats and get the chair built. So I flipped them both onto their side and added the first brace in the front, which is 24 inches. I'm also using two other pieces of two by four to kind of hold it up. So then that way everything kind of sits flush. So from the front piece, we're gonna measure back the depth of our cushion, which mine are from Target and they ended up being 24 inches deep. So I measured 24 inches back and then I am doing two screws on either side to do that back slat. Then we have to add three more slats. So I'm just going through and evenly kind of measuring them out. I did the center one and then split the difference with the other two. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna make sure that it is going to hold up your cushion. So to attach our back piece, we're gonna use pocket holes just because it's gonna be a little bit easier. So I'm using a Craig jig. This is the smallest one that they have. It's also the cheapest and it drills two pocket holes for you. I've used this on so many projects and it's fine to just have the smaller one. So you set it to the depth that you want. So because these are two by fours, we're gonna use one and a half inch. So I already have it set to that. You just slide these little things and then you're gonna take your back pieces and just slide it on. It's gonna catch where it needs to catch. And then I use just a little hand clamp. You can clamp it right to the wood. Then that way it's not gonna move on you. And then it comes with a special drill bit that you fit right inside the hole to drill the holes. And then you will have your pocket holes. So we're gonna do two on either end of the bottom side so they'll be hidden. And then I will show you how to attach it to your chair. I flip my chair completely over and then I'm just swapping out that drill bit for the little screwdriver bit. This all comes in that Craig Jig kit. And this is perfect because it will fit in that hole and help you get the pocket holes screws in tightly. 
We're gonna set down our piece of wood here. And I like to flip the chair over because then it allows me to get everything where it needs to go. You can also use the floor counter pressure to get everything to sit where it needs to go. Then we're gonna use these blue Craig Jig brand pocket hole screws. These are made for outdoors. And we're just gonna line up that back piece to make sure that it is all in there. Then we're gonna attach three back slats. The Anna White plans say you could do two or three, but I wanted to make sure that there was enough back support. So I am using those three inch screws again. I'm going to lay it flat with that bottom slat, screw it in from either side and then the back here so that we've got three pieces. And then I'm also going through with those same three inch screws directly into that back stringer, just so these don't move around on me. It's easier to do the screws on the bottom first and then go through with these so then that way they don't bump around on you. And then I've got my two by two, which is cut to about 24 inches long. And I'm going directly through the top into my three pieces to complete the back and add a little bit more stability. Then once your construction is done, it is time to style. The deep seat cushions as well as the back pillow are from Target and then the stripe pillow is from at home to match my couch that I'll show you how I made in a second. I would recommend getting these from Walmart, which I will link down below. They're the same size, but you can get a whole set for 58 and the cushions honestly are gonna be more expensive than the wood. It's just kind of how it is for cushions, but if you get nice outdoor ones, they will last you a long time. I'm super proud of how these turned out and overall they are beginner friendly. If you have somebody to help you out and give you an extra hand, that's great too. So then that way you have twice as many hands. It can make it happen twice as quick. Wow, look at this one. Oh, look at this chair. So since the chairs went well, I decided let's build an outdoor deck sofa as well. This is another plan that I got from Anna White because again, if people are gonna be sitting on things, I trust her for furniture and I just don't have that. I'm more of a wood decor person. So if I can get a plan from somebody else, that is super helpful. And if you're looking to build furniture and you're a beginner, I suggest you do the same. Step one is to measure the width of your cushions. Then that way your couch is going to be custom to these so they fit perfectly. So I've got these two piece ones, but I'm really only concerned about the seat width. So I'm gonna measure it here and we're at 24 inches, which is a traditional standard deep seat cushion width, but just measure to make sure because there's nothing worse than getting to the end and putting your cushion down and realizing there's gaps. So we're gonna measure this first so then we know that's not gonna happen. Now I got my cushions from at home because they were actually running a really good deal. Buy one, get one half off through like the Memorial Day weekend. If you are looking to build this, what I would say is just keep your eyes on different places. They run sales throughout the summer for different cushions and for the couch, you could probably even use a twin bed or a day bed mattress. Here are the different cuts here and all of this is outlined in her plans, which I will have linked down below. So you can go check those out too if you want more of a visual rendering. And then we're gonna start by assembling the seat base. We're taking our longest two by four pieces and connecting them. It's about 17 and a half inches between each of them. So I measured and then screwed directly in through the side. Usually I don't like exposed screws, but outdoors you can't really tell and it didn't really upset me that much. And it was a lot easier to do than drilling all those pocket holes. Then it was time to build the legs, which are similar to the legs of the chairs. So we're gonna take our two shorter pieces, which are 25.5, and we're gonna screw in a 28 and a half inch two by four. You're gonna make two of those. Then this is where I ended up doing the sanding of all of the different pieces, just to make sure all of the edges were covered. And then I decided to finish off the armrest before I sanded and stained. So I took another 25 and a half inch piece for the armrest, measured up 14 inches from the bottom, and then screwed it in on either side. Then we need to have a horizontal piece that we can hook our seat box into. So I am just aligning that right underneath that 14 inch from the bottom piece. And this is another one that's 25 and a half inches wide. Then, like I said, this is where I'm stopping to do that driftwood stain. I stained all the pieces, including the slats. And then I'm also going through with the spar urethane, which is water-based, two coats of that. It's a satin and it's going to protect from mold, mildew, UV, and also water. Once that dried overnight, it was time to set everything up. So I set my seat on its side and then I put both of my armrests on its side 
and I used six screws on either side to attach that horizontal two by four to my seat box. And as I flip it up, you'll see here that that is going to be flush with that piece on either side. Then I am adding all of my slats except for one that remains so that I can have that for the back part of my couch. So starting with the pieces at the front and the back, I ended up lining them up and then going through with two screws per joint here. So two screws on either end, so four total per board. Then my last step was to take that last long two by four, do two pocket holes on either end, and then add my pocket hole screws just like I did for the back of the chair. Then my friends, this was done. I added my three cushions on there that are actually one piece together. And this is great for taking things in and out because it's all just together. You can just grab them and go. You could also do three seats and three pillows. Whatever you have on hand or whatever you can find, you can go with. And then I finish it off with some pillows from Walmart that I shared in a recent haul. I love this thing. I could honestly like take a nap out here and I'm 5'11 and I can fit like leaning and putting my legs up, which is so, so, so nice. And then I figured why not go for the trifecta? Let's build a matching two by four deck coffee table, especially because Anna White had a plan for that as well. Seriously, if you do not follow Anna White, sign up for her emails and go over to her site because she has so many great furniture options. So many of the builds in my house are her plans. So here are all my cuts. I followed the plan. So again, I will link that down below so you can go check that out. But here are all of the different pieces that are cut. These are all straight cuts at all these different lengths. Then I decided to do the legs with pocket holes and pocket hole screws. In hindsight, it is not necessary and I probably will not do that again if I ever build it again. But I thought, okay, I'm gonna hide these screws, but hindsight, because I had exterior screws on the other things, it was totally fine. But I used the one and a half inch setting and then two and a half inch pocket hole screws to start to make my legs. The two legs are the 14 and a half inch pieces and then the top piece across is 20.5 inches. And you're just gonna flush it with the back of the horizontal piece. And then I sanded all of the different pieces at this point. So then that way it made it easier to not have to deal with crevices. Then I drilled a couple more pocket holes. Again, I would just drill right through the top, but I ended up drilling two holes on either side and hooking that down with the pocket hole screws. Again, I would recommend just flipping it over and just drilling right through the top, but you know, we all make mistakes and this ended up working out just fine, but I wouldn't do it again, like I said. Then I did the pocket holes to make the box. And this box is very similar to the box that we used for the couch. It is just actually going to be three pieces instead of the five or six that the other one was. Once the box was done, this was when I stopped to do the stain and let that dry and then seal it. Then we're gonna grab our completed legs and our box to go through and assemble. Now on either side, I needed to take some additional pieces of two by four just to rise it up so everything was aligned. And you'll see how I did that here. I wanted to make sure those two pieces of two by four were aligned so I just have that scrap one to correspond with the leg. And then you can just go through with your four or five, however many you can get to split across and screw from the inside out into the leg and that is going to bind those two together. You're gonna do that on both sides and then we're gonna flip it over. Then just like our couch, we're gonna add our slats, which are the 47 inch pieces. And then you can also use the same scrap wood piece from the couch or something that you have to space them out. If you don't have a scrap wood piece, you can eyeball it as well. It just helped me because I stuck it in there, slid the things over and it allowed me to space everything. The other easiest thing to do is to do your two outside ends and then straighten it from there. Then that way you don't get to the end and have a huge gap. You want each end piece to be flushed with the outside of your table. I also wanted to be fully transparent that I did have one split with the spack screws. So it happens. That was my bad. But for the most part, they worked really well without needing a pilot hole drilled. I also went back through over the top of this and gave it another coat of sealant just to make sure that it's not gonna scratch and also if it gets rained on or whatnot, it's not gonna get beat up. I'm really happy because all these pieces turned out really nice and it's definitely something you could make over a weekend, especially if you have help and somebody to either lend you a saw or you can use your own or you could do what I did and you can do it on your own. I have faith in you. Now to finish off the area, I grabbed one of these sail rugs from Costco. I ended up getting it for $79.99 and it is this kind of jute 
looking material with a black border around the outside. So I unpacked that, rolled it out on to our deck after Alex had finished restaining everything. And then I got it all set up with the furniture. I think it goes really well with that driftwood color. And overall, this area, I absolutely love it. It makes me so happy. I so enjoy drinking coffee out here. And it's going to be nice to make memories. And it's also really nice to be like, I made that. I did that. And you guys can too. I absolutely love working with tools. And I want to empower you to do so. So if you've got questions or need help, leave it down in the comments. All the supplies I used and tools will be linked down below. And if you've got questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. I would be happy to help. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy building. Bye.